Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Psychogeometrics, the science of understanding people and the art of communicating with them. We are going to have some fun today. How many of you are willing to have some fun with me today? Yeah. We're going to play a game. And the game is called Psychogeometrics. And the way we play it is very simple. Decide which one of these five shapes best describes you as a person. The first shape is a square. That's right. But I grew up in the 50s in the Midwest. And if you called someone a square, well, it had different kinds of meanings. So I soften it and call it a box. How many of you chose the box? How many of you chose the box? Oh, good. We've got at least a couple boxes. You know, there are probably some closet boxes here. Very often people don't choose it who may in fact be boxes. But the box is a very special person, I must tell you. The box is the one throughout the day and throughout the program who will be taking notes. If you get lost, you want to know where we are, ask the box. He will know. Boxes like to write everything down that I say. The second is the triangle. How many of you picked the triangle? Mm. If you happen to be sitting next to a triangle, you might tell him or her you would like to do it your way today if he doesn't mind. Triangles have a tendency to tell others what to do. So I think you will know the triangles very quickly. The third is the rectangle. Where are the rectangles? Where are the rectangles? I must tell the rectangles you need my program badly badly. Uh, the rectangles will actually learn more than any of the other shapes, and that is their advantage. The fourth is the circle. Where are the circles? Oh, lots of circles. If, in fact, you are sitting next to a circle, a little hug would be nice, you know, a, a little pat on the back. Let them know how happy you are. Circles want to be sure we're all happy here. And the last is the squiggle. I call it a squiggle. How many squiggles do we have? If you are sitting next to a squiggle, you might want to move your chair slightly away. And squiggles have some eccentricities that Thousands we will of years as we back, go along. To this is fun and in our society, very, across very the globe. Meaningful. And the it, fact that the symbolicity in our society carries meaning for the values and the behaviors and the attitudes, the things that we truly believe in. It reflects the human personality as well. The derivation of psychogeometrics is really quite simple. It comes from two things. First of all, it comes from the work of Dr. Carl Jung. Dr. Jung, in the beginning of this century, taught us about human personality, postulating that there are four primary personalities, thinker, feeler, sensor, intuitor, and those are manifested in an extroverted or an introverted manner. But there is something that Jung and Adler and Freud did not know. And that is that the way the human brain functions, the chemistry of the human brain, also affects how we think, how we behave, and how we perceive the world and act within it. And thus we know today, <clears throat> given the beauty of the science of our time, that each of us has two hemispheres. There is a left hemisphere. There is a right hemisphere in the brain. And these function differently. They process information differently. Aristotle, 2,000 years ago, said that all human beings are either linear or nonlinear, without even knowing that the chemistry of the human brain, how it functioned. And now we know that he was right, that if a person is linear, meaning a linear thinker, a logical thinker, A, B, C, D, E, then that person will tend to be a left brain thinker primarily process information on the left side of the computer. However, no one is sitting here with half a brain or half a head. I see that you all have a full face, a full head. So we have both hemispheres. People who tend to reside primarily in the right hemisphere of the brain are what he called nonlinear, what today we call abstract thinkers. And they, instead of going one, two, three, go one, three, one, five, five, eight, and jump and tend to see more the big picture. Now, what does this have to do with psychogeometrics? This is why it works. Whatever shape you chose was triggered by certain clusters in the brain of cells. And if you chose either shapes one, two, or three, you chose a linear shape. 
those tend to be chosen by people who are primarily left hemispheric, which means that these are people who are logical thinkers and expect the world to be organized. And if the world is not organized, they are upset. On the other hand, if you chose number four or number five, the circle or the squiggle, you will tend to be more right hemispheric. You will tend to be more capable of living in a messy world. In fact, you kind of prefer it that way. In the case of squiggles, they will break your rule just to see what you'll do about it. They don't like the rules and the linearity. The beauty of psychogeometrics is not only understanding oneself, but understanding the beautiful creatures with whom one works and with whom one lives. And thus we see not only the shape within ourself, but within those others who are so important to us. Now, I'm going to give you just a little bit of information about each shape. And as I go through it, think not only of yourself, but of the other significant others with whom you work and live. We're going to begin with the box. And the box is a very special person, I must tell you. The box is called the hard worker. The hard worker. Boxes get the job done. The box would not dream of living a day of his or her life without a plan. The box goes A, B, C, D and has never ventured across the corpus callosum to the right side. The box is a lefty, absolutely. Everything has got to be A, B, C, D, A, B, C, easy as one, two, three. The box has got to have it in order. And the box just cannot tolerate a messy, unpredictable, unstructured kind of setting. Boxes love working in corporations. You know, we have manuals, and those manuals are very important. And the boxes are the creators of the PP and P's, the policies, the practices, the procedures. What would we do without our policies, our practices, our procedures? The other thing that is of interest to know is the box is a data collector. You see, because the box resides in the left hemisphere of the brain, the box would not dream of making a decision without thorough analysis of the data. So the box will overturn every stone and wait until every piece of datum is collected to make the proper decision. The box is the data collector and needs it in writing. I must tell you that as well. Boxes are never really comfortable with the spoken word. You know, that's rather messy so that they know exactly what is to happen. Boxes have calendars everywhere, on their body, in their purse, in the car, on the refrigerator. Boxes spend 45 minutes a day transferring information from one calendar to the next. You see, I've got to be organized. They would not dream of living a disorganized life. Now, the other thing you should know about boxes, if you work with a few or if you know a few, is they are really not team players. And this, of course, is often seen as a negative in companies today, where we all, of course, must be excellent team players. The box is really a loner. The box hates the meetings, any sort of meeting. The box hates because the box has the day planned. You know, I need to get my task accomplished, and now I'm having to go to this meeting. And of course, who is having the meetings? We circles are having the meetings, yes. The box works at work, plays at home. But if the box is your friend, you have got it made. The box is most likely to be married to the same human being all of his or her life, may have three or four close friends, but is totally committed to those people. If you go to Europe on vacation and you get in trouble, call a box. The box will be on the next flight. The circle will talk about it, but the box will do it. Okay? Different thing. The box's motto, each shape has its own motto, as you might guess. And the box's motto is, if you want a job done right, what? Do it yourself. Absolutely. The second shape, triangles live to tell boxes what to do. The triangle is uh, the power shape. The triangle is the leader. And if the world doesn't know it yet, that's the world's problem, says the triangle. The triangle goes back thousands of years in history. It is one of the most important of all the symbols through and interspersed through all of our different cultures. It is the power shape. Thousands of years ago, it shows the focus upward, the focus to the sun, the focus to the deity. 
by whatever name that deity was called. It is the pyramid in Egypt, in Mexico. In this century, it is the hierarchy in Management 101. It is the chain of command in the military. It is the ladder that one climbs to reach the apex of power and authority. And thus, people who choose the triangle are ambitious. Aha! They are going upward and they are going to reach the apex. And if you don't believe me, eat my dust, says the triangle. The triangle is left brain, left hemispheric like the box. But the triangle has a third disc drive in the left brain. Processes information very quickly. Gets to the point. You see it in the shape. Focuses in. Wedges in. Is still linear. A, B, C, D, E. But gets to E faster. The other thing I'm telling you is quick decision maker. Quick decision maker. Smart person. Triangles are smart people. Now realize I'm not saying bright. They're not bright. Another one is bright. But the triangle is smart. Gets to the point. Point, makes a decision. The other thing that differentiates the triangle from the box is the triangle is a strategic thinker. The box is tactical, the triangle is strategic. Triangles have a long-term plan. Every day the triangle makes a to-do list, something on that list will help him accomplish his plan. Now of course the box makes a to-do list as well, but the box's list is typed, you know, whereas the triangle's list is handwritten. They are much faster on their feet, quicker to make decisions, and quicker to change them as well. Now whatever to-do list the triangle makes, of course the box is supposed to do those things, because it is the triangle who is the delegator. Triangles are the delegators, now particularly male triangles. I've got to make a differentiation here. Male triangles are good delegators. We women are still doing it all ourselves, even as triangles. So that perhaps is a little tip that we can pick up from the men. The other thing to know about triangles that is so important is they are the best political players of all five. Oh, yeah. They love the politics. They love it. Oh, it gets the blood going. I love to compete. They are competitive in every form. They love to compete. Just put me in a contest. I love it where I can win and I can beat somebody else. Oh, I love it. Every shape has its downside, of course. And with the triangle, the triangle is the most egocentric of the five, as you might have guessed. Me, me, me. Triangles are into status symbols. They want to prove to you where they've been and what they've done. After all, I've worked hard to get here. The motto of the triangle is, I did it my way. And you will do it his or her way as well, if you are not careful. Now, third is the rectangle. And the rectangles are very interesting people. The rectangle is often a period in life that all of us experience. The rectangle is a person whom I call confused up. This is not to say that rectangles are without saving graces. They have them. But the rectangle is a person in a state of change, of growth, of questioning, of redefining, of introspecting. The song of the rectangle is something's coming. I don't know what it is, but it is going to be great. <laughs> they're not sure. They know it's coming, but they're not quite sure when. The beautiful thing about rectangles is it is an unfrozen period in life in which the person is fluid, is dynamic, is changing, is growing, and it's temporary. It's temporary. It will pass. Adolescence is a very rectangular period. Who am I? What do I want to be when I grow up? Very rectangular period. Another time that it emerges is what we call midlife crisis, you know. That is the adult adolescence. What's it all about, Alfie? What do I want to be when I grow up? And we do it again. All of the firsts of life will tend to pull out the rectangle within us. All of the firsts. The first marriage, if you have more than one. The first child. The first job. The move to a new city, a new state. Retirement is a very rectangular period for people. Now, the way you know rectangles is this is the one shape that is totally unpredictable. You never quite know what the rectangle is going to be today. The rectangle is the only one 
that can be any one of the other four shapes at the drop of a hat. The best example I can give you of a rectangle is a brand new boss. Because the new supervisor gets up one morning, thinks to himself, hmm, I haven't been tough enough. That's it. I haven't been tough enough. Well, I need to be a triangle. That's it. I need to be a triangle. Mm -hmm. I can be a triangle. Yes. Puts on his navy blue suit, his blood red tie, gets in his automobile and all the way to work, thinks, get tough, get tough. By the time he hits the door of the office, he's a triangle. I want to see you in my office at 9 o'clock. I want you in my office at 10 o'clock. I want that report on my desk from you by 11. Then he walks away and looks back to see how they took it. <laughs> See, I can do this. I can do this. Now, he's not really a triangle, so now he'll go back to his office and worry about it. Oh, no. No, no, I was too tough. No, I've been to charm school. No, too tough. I need to be more circular. That's it, a circle. Now he'll come out with his circle. If tin is not comfortable for you, we can discuss it, of course. Listen, let's forget the whole thing and I'll go for cappuccino this morning. What do you say? <laughs> and all the people will go, what? Because now it's a 180-degree turn. Later in the day, he'll come back to his office, think to himself, oh no, I've blown it with the people. I've been inconsistent. That's an awful mistake. Now, the rest of the afternoon, I'm going to sit here in my office, do paperwork, hold my calls, close the door, be a box the rest of the day. So the problem is, if you work for this creature, every day you have to decide what? What is he today? And of course, what exacerbates it is, he doesn't know either. So that <laughs> constantly moving from shape to shape as we are learning and growing into a new role. The motto of the rectangle is, I know you think that what I said was what I meant, but are you sure that what I meant was what I said? You see, they are not sure. When you feel that rectangle emerging within you, it's confusing, it's uncomfortable, it doesn't feel so hot, but it means you're growing and you're changing and that is so positive. If I could make you all one shape, it would be rectangle because the rectangle is most open to new learning. The rectangle will leave having learned more today than any of the other shapes. Won't know what to do with it, of course, but we'll learn more and we'll eventually put it into place. So welcome to the rectangle. The fourth shape is the circle. And the circle, of course, is another very special person. The circle is the lover. People, people who need people, is the circle. Oh, the circle is the people person. Mm, absolutely. The circle has got to have everyone be happy. Is everyone happy here? The raison d'etre of the circle is harmony. The circle means harmony. And it goes back thousands of years in history. The circle is the most used shape in religions all over the world. It is universal. It is pantheistic. It draws the world together and surrounds the wounded creature and nurses it back to health. The circle is the nurturer, is the caretaker. Circles love people with problems. Oh, bring me your tired, your poor. If you are sitting next to a circle today and you didn't think you had a problem, she will find one. Circles need to help. How can I help? You will know the circles. They come in every morning at 8 a.m. smiling. You could kill her. But what you have to realize is she means it. She does. That's who she is. The circle is the only one of the five that is hemispherically symmetrical. From brain theory now. The circle is the only one that draws from both the left and the right hemispheres, both linear and non-linear. And this gives the circle an incredible advantage because the circle can think in both styles and combines the linear and the non-linear in a way that in our society we refer to as intuition. Intuition, highly intuitive. And that's that second sense of the circle that assist the circle in reading people well. The strength of the circle, among all of the attributes of the circle, the strength is communication. Oh, yes. The circle is the best communicator of the five, bar none. If we were to divide the word communication and look at the Latin derivatives, commune, community, ecation, responsibility for, 
And there you have the circle, taking responsibility for the community, for the entire community, and always carrying the weight of the world on his or her shoulders. And this is the downside, because harmony is the raison d'etre, anathema for the circle is conflict. They cannot stand conflict. I have a tip for you circles. Every circle should live with a triangle. Because while you were at home suffering, the triangle will look at you and say, shut up, it's not your fault. You see, the triangle knows it's not his fault, so it couldn't possibly be your fault. So the triangle is an excellent balance for the circle, and the circle is the only one who can live with the triangle. So it works beautifully in both ways. Finally, you should know, the circle is the gossip. Oh yeah, the circle is the gossip. And it's not purposeful, it's not malicious, it's just people tell circles everything. The motto of the circle, forget your troubles and just get happy. I'm going to chase all your cares away. The circle wants to be sure that we are all happy. The circle puts smiley faces on everything. Every memo, your arm, the wall. Have a nice day. Every time on the telephone, the circle finds something good about everyone in the company. The circle says, Everyone here brings happiness, some by coming, some by leaving. And the last one is squiggle. And the squiggle won the prize. How many of you are squiggles? Let's see the hands of the squiggles. The squiggle is the only pure right brainer. According to the latest brain research, only 12 to 15% of our society are truly right brain dominant, which would mean then that only 12 to 15% are truly squiggles. Now, what does this mean? The squiggle is creative, innovative, experimental. The squiggle gets bored to death with routine, mundane, sit in the same seat, fill out the form kind of stuff. The squiggle has to have a challenge, lots of excitement, freedom, the ability to move around and do it his or her own way. And the squiggle lives in her head. The squiggle's a dreamer. Oh, taking day trips all the time, okay? Do, do, do. I'm in a different place in my head all the time. The squiggle song is to dream the impossible dream. They've got to have new mountains on the horizon that they can seek. They always love to climb, but not for the purpose of saying, see, I'm on top. For the purpose of saying, another mountain behind me. And now here's another mountain to go. They always like the new challenge, the new peak experience. The squiggle, however, does not think like anyone else thinks. That's what you should know. The squiggle is very difficult to communicate with because the squiggle is not detail-oriented. The right brain functions very differently. The right brain is what we call random holistic, meaning that the squiggle is much more interested in the concept, in the theory, in the mosaic, how it all goes together, in the reason than in the rule. A squiggle child will say, why, mama? Why, daddy? They need to know the reason. They'll forget the rule. They'll remember the reason. They tend to be the ones that create the whole new systems, ideas. They are idea-oriented. And just as I told you the triangle was smart, the squiggle is bright. Different brain function, but they do not think alike at all. By the way, the squiggle is the other strong shape, the other strong personality with the triangle. The squiggle is the most disorganized. The squiggle has an office that looks like a hurricane hit it, as you might guess, but the squiggle knows where every piece of paper is. Oh yeah, but it looks awful to the outsider. The cleaners refuse to clean the squiggle's office. You know, we just don't clean that when it often has this kind of green moldy thing over here, you know, with the food from last week and all of that. The squiggle lives in the future. The squiggle is futuristic. The squiggle is really into sci-fi. Squiggles often collect X-Files memorabilia. You know, they go to those X-Files conferences and conventions. They love that sort of thing. Whatever is new, whatever is means this is the way we are going in the future is what stimulates a squiggle. You cannot help but like a squiggle. You really can't help but like a squiggle because a pure squiggle is completely spontaneous. They cannot tell a lie. Finally, you should know, if there is a squiggle in your life, good luck, because the squiggle is fickle. Oh, yes, the squiggle is fickle. And it's not intentional. They just get bored. I'm bored with him. Going to trade him in. 
Squirtles have often been married five times. If not, they've had a dozen affairs. And if you would like to hear about those, ask a circle. She will tell you. Finally, because of all those marriages and commitments, of course, the squiggle always is paying alimony, which is the other thing that brings us to the fact that squiggles have no money. No money. They have never had any money. They lose the paycheck in the parking lot on the way to the car. Um, squiggles don't sweat the new policies and all the corporate stuff that goes on. The squiggle says to the box, eh, we're going through another reorganization. When the music stops, grab the first chair you see. You see, it's really not a big deal to squiggles. How many of you know a squiggle or two? Do you know a squiggle or two? Never a dull moment. How many of you are a wannabe squiggle? Are you a wannabe squiggle? We often have people that are wannabe squiggles. Lots of boxes are wannabe squiggles, very interestingly, I think.